This presentation is brought to you by the Colorado Neurological Institute Movement Disorder Center. This is the first in a series of patient education presentations designed for families and patients who are afflicted by dystonia. Dystonia is commonly misdiagnosed and there is limited information available designed for the layperson with dystonia. This first presentation is an overview of the types of movements seen in dystonia and how these differ from other types of movement disorders. Dystonia is a movement disorder characterized by sustained or intermittent muscle contraction, usually involving agonist and antagonist muscles. This means the opposite acting muscles are simultaneously contracting, which is sometimes called co-contraction. This causes abnormal posture and often repetitive movements, or both. The movements are typically twisting and turning movements or patterned movements. There may be tremulous or tremor-like movements superimposed, but usually the tremulous movements are irregular or jerky. Although some abnormal movements may persist at rest, the abnormal movements are generally worsened by voluntary movement. The patient may also have movement overflow, in which abnormal movements are triggered by voluntary movement of a distant part of the body not affected by dystonia. The sustained twisting movement may cause muscular pain and even secondary orthopedic injury to patients. These latter two features are most common in patients who have dystonia involving the neck, or cervical dystonia. This patient has what is called cervical dystonia, which is characterized by abnormal head and neck postures. The patient's head is tilted to one side, which is referred to as lateral collis. Turn to the right. Can you turn to the left? Come back to neutral. This next patient has generalized dystonia which is characterized by abnormal movements in the trunk and at least two other parts of the body. Can you count to ten? Just look over his hands now. Huh? Out, okay. out. Out, out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Go as high as you can. Let's see what you can do. Get up really high. It's pretty hard. Let me see what you can do. Keep it up. Let's try one more time. It's okay, I know you can. I want to see how high you can get it, though. Oh, there you go, you got it. Oh. It may be difficult to differentiate dystonia from other movement disorders. Amongst the most common difficulties is differentiating dystonia from tics. Individuals may have repetitive jerky movements, sometimes with sustained abnormal postures as part of a tic disorder. Unlike dystonia, the tics are usually produced in response to an urge to make the movement, and many patients can at least briefly suppress tics voluntarily, unlike dystonic movements. Tics are often multifocal, occurring in one part of the body and then another. Tics tend to wax and wane. Patients may have motor tics in which abnormal movements are made, and they may have focal tics in which either formed words or said or other utterances occur, such as sniffing or grunting. Most commonly, tics occur as part of Tourette syndrome, which is a chronic motor and vocal tic disorder occurring with onset before the age of 18. Occasionally, tics can begin in adulthood and may be a purely motor disorder without vocal tics, in which case, the differentiation from dystonia can sometimes be more difficult. Tremor is generally defined as a rhythmic oscillatory movement produced by alternating contractions of opposite acting muscles. Dystonic tremor is usually irregular, unlike most other forms of tremor, and is usually produced by simultaneous or co-contraction of opposite acting muscles. The most common forms of tremor are those seen as part of essential tremor and Parkinsonian tremor. Patients with dystonic tremor usually have superimposed abnormal posture of the affected body part in addition to the tremulous movements. Isolated head tremor without tremor elsewhere in the body 
is usually due to cervical dystonia and dystonic tremor, but is commonly misdiagnosed as essential tremor. This patient is a good example of a head tremor. Her tremor is only slightly noticeable at first, then begins to worsen after moving her head. And slowly bring your chin to your chest. And slowly put your head back. And slowly come back to neutral. We hope that you have found this first presentation to be useful and informative. The next part of the presentation about what is dystonia will focus on the classification and causes of dystonia.